the Science Weekly, an industry pundit podcast about the tech and innovation of the 21st century. An open discussion between industry experts to uncover how emerging technologies can help solve current societal issues. Welcome to Science Weekly podcast. Um, I'm Burak Doloy. I'm the Entrepreneurship Community Manager at Science. And today we'll be interviewing George Danos. Um, who kindly accepted our invitation and joined us today. Um, he'll be telling a bit about himself to us. So, George, can you please tell, about, tell us a bit about yourself, um, your previous experience, because I know a bit about you and it's interesting, and uh, what made you come back, and the, thing, the great things that you're doing currently here. First of all, let me thank you for inviting me here. It's a great pleasure to be uh, in this uh, great uh, place. Um, Yes, uh, I, I've been for something like 15 years uh, abroad, uh, mostly in the UK. And uh, at some point, uh, my heart started to beat uh, Cyprus. I want to come back to my home country. And um, when I was there in the UK, I was um, very much involved in um, entrepreneurship. I formed uh, one of the important companies of uh, the Virgin Group of Richard Branson. Um, so that's one of the interesting stories of my younger life. And I was always thinking, will I ever be able to surpass that stage of my life with something more important, especially coming to a small island? So I, I never thought that um, anything of that past in the UK could have ever been uh, bettered here. But I came back, and I'm a very stubborn person, so uh, I looked at the whole scenery what could be my contribution to this place that I very much love and I call home. Oh, that's amazing. And um, now you're, you're the president of Cyprus Space Exploration Organization. That's correct, yes. Can you please tell us a bit about what CSEO does? Uh, the Cyprus Space Exploration Organization was uh, founded back in 2012 took us a couple of years to go through the legalities and the, the full registration. So uh, the activity started in 2013 and 14. And um, we, we, we have four basic pillars in CSEO. The first and primary one is outreach and education. Because if you don't uh, disseminate to people the importance of space exploration, if you don't attract them, in what you do in space exploration, how do you expect to have the scientists that will take the research to the next step? So that's number one, outreach and education. But the number two is research. And of course, everybody would say space research in Cyprus, that sounds a bit uh, exotic. So that was the second pillar. The third one is stimulating the industry, creating startups, uh, supporting the existing businesses, attract other businesses to come and set base here in Cyprus. And the fourth pillar, international relations. So the first one, with education and outreach, sound very logical. But the rest were high goals. And yet again, here we are today, having at least in the first element, outreach and education, having achieved uh, at least two or three international wins at the level of NASA with the teams that we sent to the international competitions, the Space Ups Challenge, which is also running um, this uh, coming weekend, uh, but then into research, we managed to be involved in substantial research. And one of the most interesting types of research that we're doing from the many projects that we have going is uh, the instrumentation that uh, will uh, study the or measure the age of the rocks of Mars. And that mechanism will be integrated here in Cyprus, in our research facility in Nicosia, and then it will be tested on the mountains of Troodos, because as we know, Troodos has got a very diverse geology, and some of the areas of Troodos are similar to the geology of Mars. So therefore, imagine a mechanism that we're going to a future mission to Mars to be integrated here and tested here in our mountains. It sounds a bit like science fiction happening in Cyprus, Yes, it is a bit of science fiction, even for us. Wow, it's it's amazing and it's, it's great news. Well, when when we talk about space, okay, we know space is reachable, but it it sounds unreachable. A bit. Yes. 
Um, so when we tell people we have this program, you're, you're doing outreach, you're cre creating awareness and then educating people so they can contribute. But let me ask you a bit of like a cliche. Does somebody need to be a rocket scientist to participate in these programs or create solutions to contribute to space mission? Or what would be some of the areas that people can work that are not directly related with engineering only? Um, every time I speak to somebody and I say we're dealing with uh, space exploration, uh, the first question they say, oh, so you must be an astrophysicist. <laughs> and then the second question, oh, so if you're not an astrophysicist, you must be a rocket scientist. So no, neither of the two are necessities in order to be involved in space research, space engineering, space diplomacy. You need the entire spectrum of um, uh, specializations from being a doctor, being a physicist, being a lawyer, who's going to do the contracts to go to space, uh, being a marketeer, um, and all the rest, of course, that are expected, material sciences, engineering, computing, data analysis, uh, rocket scientists, astrophysicists, but I'm leaving those two for last because all the rest are equally important. And when we also set bases, which is happening right now, when we set bases on the moon, we're going to also need cleaners, builders. Who's going to build those bases? So every single profession, almost every single profession that we have done here on Earth is applicable in what we do in space exploration. And the difference between space exploration and astronomy, astronomy is the science of studying the heavens, studying the movements and motions of the planets and the stars and the galaxies. We do that from Earth, from here looking upwards. But space exploration is actually going there. So imagine all the skill sets in order to achieve that goal to get to the celestial bodies, to other planets, to maybe even one day outside our solar system. Okay, that's, that's amazing. Maybe I'll find an idea one day to contribute to this uh, mission. So what has been done so far in Cyprus to contribute to the global space mission? Um, and what benefits does Cyprus have to offer to anyone looking to come and work here in space-related projects? Uh, that's a, a very interesting uh, question because indeed when we first started, we never thought that um, we could have done something more than maybe facilitate a bit of a, a conference here, a conference there regarding the international aspect, of, of course, which is the fourth pillar of international collaboration. But yet again, what we achieved in 2018 surpassed any of our expectations, and what is happening right now even surpassed 2018. So what happened back then? Um, we knew, I knew, from all the different meetings that I have internationally and the different roles that I have in international committees, uh, chairing a couple of uh, committees. For example, I'm uh, a vice chair of the International Committee for Innovation at the, uh, space the, 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 the International Space Organization called COSPAR. So in those meetings, we knew that the international community needed um, a call it a bridging, a facilitation, a neutral place where they could cooperate. So we invited all the top scientists, the chief scientist of NASA, his counterpart from the Russian Space Institute, from Europe, from China, from India, from Canada, from all the different parts of the world, the countries that are actually leading in space exploration. And we had them here in Cyprus in what we call the International Space Summit. And after a week of activities, meetings, research, etc., which went very well, and they were very happy, and they also observed the hospitality of Cyprus, we made sure that we um, catered them with some of our best uh, delicacies, definitely Sheftalia. Mm -hmm. So we also <laughs> made sure that we took them to some of the best uh, beaches to swim, like uh, Kornos Beach in uh, um, uh, Protaras. So they loved it. They absolutely loved it. So they realized they could do the job. They could meet between the different countries. They had the beautiful sun, good food, good hospitality, and beautiful places to relax in the, uh, on, the, on the coast. So on the last day, we, we, we asked the most important question. Do you want this place to be your permanent base? And 
make this your headquarters. There was a high-level meeting between the leaders of all these countries, and it was the unanimous decision by all of them, and it was actually asked firstly by the chief scientist of NASA, and answered then by the Russian Space Institute, and they both agreed in a very strong way, and then everybody else also agreed, and as of 2018, Nicosia Cyprus is the base of the Mars Upper Atmosphere Network that studies the atmosphere of Mars, and it's based here from all these big bodies. Wow. And there are many more things that I could actually say, but um, there will be announcements in, in the next uh, few uh, weeks and months because more things are coming on top of what I just said. Wow, that's, that's amazing. I'm looking forward to hear what, what else is coming after this. Um, before I go to the next question, it might be worth also mentioning if we want to hear what these news are, where do we find you? How can we hear your news? Okay, very interesting one. Um, I would say the best way to hear the news of the organization uh, would be to follow the organization on social media. Uh, we're particularly proud that uh, we are um, one of the top uh, organizations in the world in our dissemination of international news and our own news. So if somebody wants to follow what we do, um, all you have to do is go to Facebook and look for Cyprus Space Exploration Organization and you will see that there's approximately 300,000 people from around the world that engage our news on a uh, daily basis. Wow, that's, yeah, most of the cities of Cyprus all together on Facebook. Correct. <laughs> and, and, and let me say at this uh, point that uh, um, we may have this number of followers, but on a, on a monthly basis, the statistics uh, say that we have two and a half million people that read our news. So it's not just the followers, but it's the friends of the followers. So that's more than the population of Cyprus. Yes, definitely. That's yes. amazing. Um, the time is going fast. So before we close, um, we also know that you have another responsibility, a very important one for the country. Um, you're working both hands, hands on in the field to help people in a way and create businesses and projects to contribute to the space mission. And at the same time, you're contributing to the policy work to shape the future of um, Cyprus by being the, the president of Parallel Parliament of Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Um, can you please tell us a bit about your work there briefly and where do you see Cyprus in the next five years? And what are the major, major things that needs to change? My God, where do we start? There's a lot of things that need to be, to be changed and improved. And we all know uh, quite a few of the problems. I'm not going to go into the cliche issues that we know that Cyprus has got, but I'm going to go on to what do we do in at least entrepreneurship, innovation. How do we stimulate the young people to be involved in um, uh, creating new companies and not to have to leave the island? So uh, the entire entrepreneurial ecosystem of Cyprus has appointed members of parliament at the parallel parliament of entrepreneurship. So from the sector of uh, agriculture, tourism, um, uh, industry, services, banking, uh, the entire, the entire ecosystem of businesses on the island. And we've looked at the different problems and we looked at how to modernize, bring these various separate sectors to the 21st century, but also to synergize them between them. Because if we see that one sector or certain companies from one sector could have got synergies from another sector and you connect them, then the combination could be catalytic to stimulate entrepreneurship, to stimulate profit and business. So we've been doing that. But at the same time, we've been listening to the problems, trying to solve them. And most importantly, we've been running various um, activities that bring in the young people to make sure that we support them and have created a, an infrastructure, a framework that will support these people to build their companies, 
um, get them up and running, um, support them through the life cycle of what they do, and then help them even with the funding and bringing them connections from around the world in having clientele. So it's not just about saying, hey, we gave you funds, we gave you 100,000, we gave you 200,000, just go and do everything on your own. You have to be there and also make sure that the system is functional for them and not dysfunctional in their needs. Well, that's, that's the best way to approach, I guess, that you see the needs of all the stakeholders, you engage them together, and then you make sure that they all get what they're looking for in, in order to succeed. Wow, amazing. Um, thank you very much, George. Um, this was great. Um, I would love to hear more. I'm already following you on Facebook, um, so I'll be uh, fo looking forward to hear the upcoming news and you know, d doing things a separate way when Mars travel is uh, available for public. I'm going to call you to see if you have any connections for cheaper tickets or which company to go with. <laughs> so expect, <laughs> expect my call. <laughs> Let me add at this point that uh, you are doing an amazing job here at Cyprus Inno, but also uh, the Science Center of Excellence is doing an amazing job and bringing together players that can work together and magnify the results is the right way to go forward. Cooperation is the name of the game. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Science, former RISE, the research center of excellence in Cyprus, focusing on interactive media, smart systems, and emerging technologies. For more information, please check our website on science.org.cy.